But it was, of course, you were thinking, uh, what can I tell that is, that is even mildly interesting and entertaining? Because I was put under pressure to, to talk at all. If you organize this, you will have to, you will have to do, do a presentation yourself. So. OK. Um, well, I considered some options. Uh, in fact, we are at the moment using the one here to say to, to prototype a fairly big and complex uh, system. So one of the options was to tell something about that, but it's really, well, if you're an outsider, I think it can be a bit pretty boring stuff. It's just a lot of interfacing with strange uh, uh, parts, etc. And also, it's a bit of the, the secret story, yes, <laughs> because it's product development. So, uh, so then I thought about some other options. And one option was I have written, in fact, uh, over the last in the last few months, I'm not sure exactly when, a system to produce web pages. But I thought no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, then I remembered a very funny, at least I thought it was a very funny little experiment we did here at OSE, and I'm, I'm trying to, to explain a little bit about that. So the, the title is Simulating Complex Systems with Lua, so it means it doesn't mean much, but the idea is um, here at OSE we, we deal with a lot of different people and a lot of different disciplines. For example, if you develop something like a printer or a copier, uh, there are lots of uh, very difficult parts in there, a scanner engine, a printer engine, all kinds of uh, print file interpreters, PostScript, PCL, uh, others. Uh, you have to, to do some local user interface. Uh, there is this controller that, that has to make sure that it works, and it works all at the right speed, etc. Uh, on top of that, we also, in, in this single machine that can be pretty big, I mean, well, I'm not sure exactly about the sizes, but several meters uh, long, uh, there are even different hardware platforms, so part of it is just on a normal uh, PC platform, an Intel platform, for example, but other parts, like the, the stuff that's driving the motors, etc., that can be on, for example, an ARM processor, or even different stuff like very specifically programmed FPGAs or ASICs. So all in all, the, the system is very complex to, to get in your head all in, at once for one person. So we are often having discussions about how should we implement some feature, how should we make sure that the timing is okay. And uh, at least what I found was that if I talk to the, uh, to the people that, of course, uh, for example, develop the print engine, they're saying a, lots of uh, they're saying a lot of information very quickly and I just don't understand what they're saying. And it's difficult for the other disciplines to, to to follow the, the reasoning and actually understand that it will be a good solution. So what we did then uh, for one particular problem uh, was I thought, well, if I can understand it, at least I can try to simulate it and see if, if what he's saying is indeed correct. So then I did a very, very little uh, and quick experiment in Lua. Uh, and the basic idea was, uh, so it's, it's about these this last issue. How can I get a feeling that it really is okay with what everyone's saying? And so I thought of uh, a little simulation environment. So the idea is very simple. So we have a lot of stuff going on, uh, scanner control, printer control, uh, user interfaces, connections, etc. And I developed a very simple, very simple system in which all these complex parts are simply small scripts. Each script is executing in a separate coroutine. So you have more or less you can yield between them and have some, uh, emulate some uh, uh, concurrency. And there is a main uh, simulator loop that just uh, uh, schedules these little scriptlets uh, at certain points to, to simulate the, the overall system behavior. Um, for that, there is only uh, one very simple basic mechanism uh, underneath that all, and that's uh, timed events. So if you want to, to have something done, you can post an event to the scheduler, 
and it will, uh, it will return control to you if that event occurs. And it's important to know that, uh, I skipped some points and first go to this last one. In the whole point is the simulation is not to, to be, it shouldn't be really real time. I just want to know what the timings would be. So the idea was I just run a simulation and uh, I get some output of timings immediately. So not in real time. So time is really just a property of events. So you can see when would this event have happened in the real world, if it was real time. So there's a very simple module underneath it, events and triggering uh, coroutines based on these events. Well, on top of this very simple mechanism, you can very quickly uh, implement all kinds of well difficult mechanisms. Some are more difficult than others. For example, it's very simple to implement something like a semaphore. I will show some example code for that, in fact, later on. But you can also say, well, I have a processor, and all these scriptlets, of, or part of these scriptlets, they will use this processor. So they all claim some time, and you want to do compu computations over a certain amount of time with a certain load of the processor. And when the processor gets too busy, the, you, know, you will be delayed. So you can also, uh, for example, model something like that. But the more uh, processes uh, or scriptlets try to access uh, the processor, the slower it goes, things like that. And for example, I.O. is a very, very important part of this uh, simulation. Because I.O. is really very slow. Um, so that's an important factor to, to take into. Uh, well, here's a very simple example. This is not the actual example, of course, but this was just a very simple and quick example that I did for, for this presentation. So I have some module, I call it the simulating sim module, and it allows you to simply spawn processes like this. So at this first number is a delay, so in zero seconds you should spawn the process <coughs> called the server. This is just to identify it in the logging files. And here's some script file that is the server. Well, now I spawn three clients that do something with uh, even different parameters. I give them names so I can, uh, I can recognize them at the output. Uh, again, some timings at which you should start. And then uh, I run the simulation. And it will produce, in fact, a very simple output. So I choose to just output common separated values information. And you can pick that up and, and load it in Excel, for example, and, and display all kinds of nice uh, graphics with that. So it really, I, I, don't, I didn't count the number of lines in this SIM module, but it, it's not much. Really a very small thing. And for example, well, this, this I said uh, it was a very simple example. This example uh, spawned a server and some clients, and the only thing the clients did was I try to get some amount of data to the server. But I do it simultaneously and the connection is slow and so uh, different timings can occur. And in fact the server was implemented just by a loop. I wait for a connection. When a connection is opened, I spawn a worker process that receives the data and then it's finished. So a very simple uh, situation in which the client sends data to the server. And, and here's an example output that can be 